Friends, it's my honor to welcome Nathan Law back to W&J. President Knapp, honorable guests, graduates, ladies and gentlemen, and anyone in between or not bound by it. Good morning, my name is Nathan Law. For those of you expecting Taylor Swift on the stage, I'm so sorry. Um, this is not a New York vibe. Unfortunately, um, yes, uh, here I am. All kidding aside, I'm still making sense of why I'm delivering this speech. The one speech that marks the end of your studies here at Washington and Jefferson College. The typical commencement speaker is a government official, a cultural icon, an inspirational entrepreneur, a sophisticated intellectual, and the list goes on. Yet I'm nothing like them. I don't have the charm, nor the fame, nor the wealth. In fact, I'm just like most of you, a young person finding his way through this journey called life. If you were expecting a success story, then I would have to let you down. My life is full of struggles and failures. And that is essentially the life of an activist fighting against almost impossible odds. We pursue ideas that fundamentally challenge our society. We devote parts of our lives to collective goals that make our communities and the world a better place. But we rarely see immediate results. Most of the times, we find difficulties hard to swallow. For me, because of my fight for democracy in Hong Kong, I was arrested a few times. Back in 2016, I was elected as the youngest legislator in Hong Kong's history. Yet the Chinese government soon intervened to unseat me. I spent part of 2017 locked up in a prison cell, and since I left the city just before the sweeping national security law imposed by Beijing went into effect in 2020, I am now a wanted fugitive. I can never go back to Hong Kong, the city I love and call home, at least not until it's democratized. After I went into exile, Given the Chinese government's long record of persecuting families of dissidents, I had to issue a statement severing ties with my family members in order to protect them. The goal of achieving democracy, freedom, and justice in Hong Kong, or even in China, is an ambitious dream, is an ambitious dream? a destination that seems so far, far away, if it is ever reachable. As such, I, I know a lot about failure. I know even more about dealing with failure and growing stronger after defeat. I know about the feeling that it may take a long time, longer than we can ever imagine, to see hope, but nevertheless, continue to try. And I understand, perhaps, more than anyone else, that a person's value and self-worth are not always based on how the world commonly defines success. I don't have money, I don't have power. What I have is a criminal record that follows me around because of protest-related charges. I feel insecure all the time. But when I think ultimately what ultimately matters is that your heart you know in your heart what you treasure and you know what you are willing to sacrifice for. My life will be full if I realize the dream of democracy and freedom in Hong Kong. But my life is not empty without it. And I am always proud of the hurdles that I have overcome and what I've achieved along the way. The result does not define you as a person process does. To live a meaningful life, I think, is to fight for what you believe in. And when you grow old with great hair or probably all of them are gone, 
You look in the mirror and you don't hate the person you see. There is no need for me to remind you here of the importance of perseverance and determination. You have all been through years of hard work to get to this spot. Today, you have earned your degree that you most definitely deserve. Congratulations. I am sure many people in your life, family, friends, professors, have told you that the future is bright, that the adventures that lie ahead of you will be exciting. I want to echo them. This is a big day for you. Now, while I don't want to rob this moment of celebration from you, neither do I want unrealistic. Every once in a while, things will not turn out the way you hope or expect. Most of our lives will inevitably comprise setbacks, and they may occupy a large part of your life. Please know that you will be fine. Precisely because life can offer you so much you can never expect, both for the better and worse. That's why you need to be prepared. I like to think of myself as a peer, a young person, like all of you. But in my 20x years of life so far, I have learned a few lessons that are crucial to becoming the person I am today and to reflecting honestly about myself. I hope you will allow me to share some of these with you. First, no matter how good a person you are or how excellent your performance is, there are always people who hate you. Your work is, going to, is not going to please everyone. The path towards greatness always comes with challenging existing ideas and upsetting people who don't want change. If there are hostile people standing in front of you, it does not necessarily mean that you're wrong. It could be precisely because you're right. If you know what you're doing, keep doing it. A life without challenges is meaningless. You must be prepared for this and get ready to take the hit. You can be frustrated, disheartened, or distressed by it, but never feel hopeless and stop fighting. Develop a mechanism that shields you from criticism that aims at destroying you. You have to stick to your beliefs and keep going. Second, find passion in your life. Your passion is what saves you when you feel low. Find something you can dig into when you're down. Playing computer games, writing poems, um, gardening, something like this. Anything that does not help with your life goals or work, but means a lot to you. This is the escape and healing zone that you need when you are hurt, sad, or lost. You always need a safe space where you can pour your energy into while you don't have to compete or compare with anyone else. Third, you need to rebel. You need, to, you need deviance because you are unique. You have your own ideas, faith, and things that matter to you. Sometimes you feel like you're a triangle trapped into a square box, and you need to yell. Rebellion is a way to express, to communicate, and to make the world a better place. But you should not rebel because you find it cool or just don't want to listen to others. You always rebel for ideas, for a collective future, something that is much bigger than yourself. It will push you to become a better person, to live a life with purpose. Rebel for love, the love for life, for your families, for your community, for your friends. Love is what supports us to go through turmoil and grow stronger in and out. Fourth, learn to identify and welcome constructive criticism, including from your most ferocious critics. Some criticism are there to destroy you. Some can help you grow. In adversities and defeats, find opportunities to learn and to grow stronger as a person. 
learn lessons to be better prepared the next time. See each setback as a test for your commitment, each challenge as a test of character. Remain calm if you can, and if you feel you're losing control, try to seek out the time and space that will allow you for perspective. You also have to be committed. Don't give up because you are scared of failing. But learn to give up when you are brave enough to admit mistakes and amend errors. Fifth, go into the unknown to explore, to risk, to unfold the unseen. The world is completely unpredictable. We are still going through an unprecedented global pandemic, a war in Europe initiated by a dictator. Even the shortage of baby formula is driven by polarized politics. Many of these are unimaginable, but they happen. When you have learned, what you have learned in the classroom does not necessarily equip you to predict or to be comfortable about the future. There are no model answers, no predestined paths ahead of you. Life always takes unexpected turns. And sometimes they are not necessarily bad. I grew up in a blue color family. My father was a builder, my mother was a cleaner. I learned to keep my head down and don't rock the boat. It was only after many, many unexpected turns in my life that shaped who I am and having a life that is much more meaningful than I have ever expected. Only by accepting the possibility of failures, breathing in the bravery to adventure, understanding the vulnerability of our own status, and being ready to adapt, we can create our own paths. It may lead you somewhere you don't know or you are not familiar with, but it is a place that interests you and best responds to this ever-changing and unpredictable world. Let me end on a personal note. Before entering college, I actually missed a year because of my public exam results were not up to my expectations. I was upset at the time and felt like I failed and wasted a year of time. But it was actually because I postponed my enrollment to college that I happened to be in a position of student leadership in 2014 when the umbrella movement broke out. The massive protests marked a turning point when Hong Kongers stood up and resisted in the face of blatant lies from the Chinese government. I stepped into the limelight and became a student activist from that point on. As they say, the rest was history. Sometimes we feel like we are stuck in a bad spot. It is only in retrospect that we may realize it has been a gift all along. For me, to be able to even stand here on this stage today is extremely unlikely. Inviting a Hong Kong activist to campus is not easy and certainly not without cost, let alone awarding me an honorary doctoral degree. So I want to acknowledge, once again, the entire Washington Jefferson College community for your hospitality and friendship. Where we go from here is up to us. I know I will keep carrying on, and I hope you will too. Thank you for having me. Congratulations to the class of 2022.